Time the president set to address the nation tonight, outlining his plans for this year's agenda. The latest NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows the majority of Americans disapprove of his performance thus far, and only 28 percent of Americans are satisfied with the economy. Keeping that in mind, what can we expect from tonight's State of the Union? Let's bring in Republican Senator of Tennessee, Bob Corker, a member of the Senate Banking Committee. Senator, always great to see you. Good morning. Carl, good to see you, sir. Uh, so the Washington Post says this is going to be, and this is their words, a landing point or a launching point for a year of sustained assaults on Republicans. How likely do you think that is? Oh, Carl, I don't know. You know, I've been here seven years, and I've heard both Republican and Democratic presidents, and uh, I think these uh, speeches would be much more transparent if you just had the chief pollster uh, for the president give the talk, okay? I mean, these are really... Uh, poll tested comments. Uh, you know, it's I go out of respect for the office of presidency and and respect for the constituents that I represent. But it's a pretty painful evening, no matter who's talking. So we'll see what happens. How, how do you feel about some of the bread and butter issues that are expected to come up? Minimum wage, early childhood education, college yeah. affordability. Yeah. So again, Carl, you know these 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 are poll tested talks. I don't really care so much what's said tonight. I care what we do, and I would hope that uh, what the president would do over the course of the next uh, period of time is take advantage take advantage of where we are economically and deal with the fiscal issues of our nation. Uh, deal with some of the bread and butter issues that really will move our country ahead. And I hope you'll show the courage and the leadership and the hard work that it takes to bring our nation together and not continue down this path of, again, using poll tested comments, uh, doing things that basically divide us for electoral victory. But look, I, I think we know what probably is going to happen. I'm going to continue working on those fiscal issues, the trade opportunities that we have, and hoping that the president will take on his base and really move us ahead in that way over the next year. But uh, again, this will, I'm sure, be more of the same. And by the way, that's a bipartisan observation that I'm making. Senator Corker, wonder what you think about the president and the White House leaning toward more executive action, the president going at it alone without the help of Congress for issues that are most important to him. Yeah, again, as I've mentioned, look, uh, to lead a great nation like ours, um, it takes courage, it takes leadership, it takes hard work. And it, you can always take some shortcuts, like he may allude to tonight, but those are not the things that move the nation ahead. And I think we've seen the result of that type of activity over the course of the last several years. That's why you have such pessimism in our nation. What I would hope the president would commit himself to do with just three years left in his term is to really do that hard work and to really work legislatively to solve the bigger issues that we have. I'm afraid that based on the, based on the leaks and the kinds of pre-speech uh, statements that have made, been made, that's not what's going to happen. But what our nation needs right now is that. And uh, I hope somehow the president will move himself ahead at some point to do it in that manner and not the divisive way of taking executive orders and doing things again that that candidly don't bring the nation together. Are, are you convinced after all this time, Senator, that any kind of additional outreach to the Hill would actually be well received? Oh, I think we've got tremendous opportunities, Carl. I really do. I th the trade issue is one of the biggest opportunities we have. Both uh, the TPP and, and the European-U.S. trade agreements, outstanding opportunities if the president will will deal with this base and move this along. Um, so yes, I do. I think we've got some opportunities with immigration. And I think if we could focus more on those things that unite us as a nation, the country's pessimism, pessimism would dissipate, but we could also move ahead. But again, unfortunately, this speech, well, I promise it's, it's, it'll be totally poll tested towards the November elections. And I just think, uh, again, what a shame with just three years left in your presidency, uh, at least that's the indication that we're getting relative to this evening. But again, that's what presidents on both sides of the aisle, unfortunately, have done for so many years with these State of the Union talks. And uh, I almost wish they'd just send a document up to us and avoid uh, all of this hype, if you will, that, that we're going through right now. Yeah, well, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to go through it, that's for sure. <laughs> Senator, thanks for your time. Thank we'll you. see you soon. Thank you. Uh, Bob Corker Thank of Tennessee. Make sure you keep it right here for all your State of the Union coverage. Of course, I'll be anchoring along with Kelly Evans tonight.